this is the Behringer 1050 mixer sequencer module, the second incarnation of a sequencer from the ARP 2500 series. The other one is the 1027 CV sequencer, which I reviewed in one of my last videos. This 1050 module is a hybrid thing between a sequential switch and a performance mixer and probably one of the most complex modules from the whole 2500 series. Let's go through its obvious front plate elements first before we dive into the different operating modes. Here we have the 8 inputs which go to these 8 attenuators, so each input has its own attenuator. And the whole module is DC coupled, so you can use it for audio and CV signals. After these signals passed their attenuators, they proceed to these switches here, which are either open or closed, and when the button is lit up, the switch is closed, which means the signal can proceed into this mixing stage here. It depends on the mode, how the signals are mixed together, but basically this group of signals here goes into one mixer and uh, the other one goes to the other mixer. Each group has its uh, own additional attenuator and then the result goes to output A from this group and to output B from this group. There is a bit of variation with the different modes and this is the mode selector and in the leftmost position groups A and B are independent from each other. The sequencer then runs through at most four steps and groups A and B are synchronized and pass their mix to the respective outputs. We can select less than four steps with this counter selector, which is ineffective in this mode when it is set to more than four. In the middle position of this switch, the sequencing is basically the same as before, so both groups are within their four steps, but the outputs of both groups get mixed together before they go to these attenuators. So it is basically one mixer now, which mixes all steps into one combined output, but then you grab this output and feed it through these two attenuators, so you can get different levels in the outputs A and B. But both outputs always have the same result um, from this mixing stage here. Finally, in the rightmost setting here, we have a 8-step sequencer and both groups become one, so the output is mixed from all steps and goes to these two attenuators again. So the outputs A and B are the same, but we can again tune them to different levels. These square buttons here have two functions. They indicate when the switch is closed and they can be used to activate certain steps and then these steps stay uh, activated, which means the switch keeps closed until we press the button again. And this step is then basically disconnected from any sequencing, it just stays closed and passes its signal through to the mixing stage. These red buttons here isolate a certain step and they only work properly when the step counter is set to off and no advancing in any way happens here, so no internal clock or no external advanced trigger is active. Then a press on one of these buttons activates the respective step and deactivates all the other ones from the group, or in the 8 step mode it deactivates all other steps. This is why they are called isolate buttons, because you can isolate a single step and yeah, quickly um, switch between the steps and also use this for a quicker navigation when you are tuning your single steps. In this mode, however, you can also reactivate other steps when you press these square buttons and um, the whole feature is handy for tuning and quick switching actions and makes this a nice performance mixer. The sequencing modes can be changed with this three position switch. In the upper position it enables the internal clock, which is called pulse generator here, and it has a manual speed setting. You can also manually advance these steps when you switch this selector to its momentary down position. So this position is spring-loaded and if you release the switch it goes back to off. The step counter determines the length of the sequence in both groups, where it is ineffective above four steps, or in the combined eight-step mode 
you can use it in the full range and set anything between two and eight steps. When you switch this counter to off, no sequencing happens and it doesn't matter if you use the internal clock now or any manual advance, the sequencer just will not uh, do anything when the step counter is off, which only holds for this internal and manual advance mode. The other mode is a uh, synchronization to the 1027 and you can connect um, these ribbon cables here on the back and set the internal clock to off and now each step advance of the 1027 also advances one step in the 1050. Important here is that you cannot use the step counter in this mode and you should just set it to off because otherwise it produces some strange glitches and it sometimes freezes steps in their on state and you cannot deactivate them. The reason for these steps being freezed in their on state is that we uh, have deactivated the internal clock but it basically got stuck at this step here and keeps this step activated. And as soon as we turn the uh, step counter to off, the internal clock is disconnected from these uh, switches. So it uh, stops freezing these steps in the on state. If you keep this step counter off, this also means that you cannot reset the sequence early. So you always have to go through the eight steps. But you can reset the 1027 using the gate outputs and the reset input and this then also resets the 1050. We could also use the internal clock in combination with the external advance and uh, to do this we have to uh, activate the step counter again because otherwise the internal clock is completely disconnected from the sequencer. Now we also don't have a problem with these um, frozen steps because the internal clock is now running and uh, switches through these steps and the result is quite chaotic now. This external advance input works in all modes and also respects the step counter. The 1050 follows the external triggers up to about 9.67 kHz, which is in the very high audio range, somewhere above a D9 on the note scale, so very high in the upper uh, hearing range. And this makes it a perfect sub oscillator in this mode. Just feed a constant CV into one or more of the inputs, connect the external advance input to a VCO output and have a nice subharmonic oscillator added to your mix. That's basically it. I'm quite sure I forgot something, but I hope this video will get you started with the 1050. The combination with the 1027 is incredibly flexible and gives you hours of tweaking and testing, for example when you chain the three channels of the 1027 with the help of the 1050, and this gives you a 24-step CV sequencer. If you're interested, follow the link to my 1027 review, where I tried this patch. The whole ARP 2500 series is now quite complete. The only thing missing is a synth voice module, which the original series had. But apart from that, it's a versatile, complex and super interesting series of modules and surely gives you some fancy sounds and hours of playing around with these quite unconventional modules. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.